Nice cup of water. I have no confidence in doing any of this. Perfectly. Oh well. Doesn't matter. Got some wine. I hate wine, but here we go. Ah! Nasty. But hey, starting off the new year with massive pain. Yellow! Or should I say blue on account of how I feel right now? You probably already know my name. Demo, because it's in the channel name. Come on. This new year has already turned out to be absolutely nuts. Both in my own life and the grand overarching world from document releases of names nobody should like anymore and weird things like 10 foot tall aliens in Miami or underground tunnels underneath New York synagogues due to, I don't know, like cult-like behavior from its youth. That's conspiratorial. I should stop that. Either way, nuts is a particularly light word. This year so far I've had physical nerve issues and while that's probably not a good thing to say to someone I don't intrinsically know. Don't worry, I'm healing and I... It, it has everything to do with what I'm about to cover, okay? Yeah, I am smiling. No, we're not going into my health issues or anything like that. That That's dumb. What I'm doing is showcasing problems I want to have fixed before the end of the year in regards to my art and creation. Okay, so let's start. Just jump in. Chapter 1. Music. I'm more or less an idiot when it comes to making music. Well, I, I'll say mixing music because even though I have thousands of dollars worth of Wave Central plugins for my purposes, I only know how to use one tenth of them correctly, I should say. And then you got to use each one differently for every instrument. Also, depending on what genre the song is in, it's all really, really cool to get to where you test things out. What's not cool is I get in there. Stay several hours tweaking sounds and it comes out somehow worse when I started. I think that's what they call mixer's ear or something like that. Things just start to blend together at that point. I'm not sure what to do about it other than take a, take a long stretch of time away from it. Here's the process for mixing. First, you compose a song, record various tracks as about, as about uh, the same exact instrument, pan them if you need to, then volume match it, and level it. My issue is the last part. I'm going to say this so I can make a video similar to this at the end of the year, so to see what changes. Kind of like a diary. So I add plugins in this order right now. It may change in later, but oh well. The amplifier if I need it. The equalizer. The compressor. Sometimes I add in a second one for tweaking. Transient shapers. Gotta be honest, I have no idea how to use any of those. Exciters if I need it. Imagers, which helps me add girth. That what earth to the sound a limiter and then I have to mix the volume again and then you got the bus attachments these confuse me I don't know how to use them because it's called side chaining and parallel compression I'll get to it in a bit I'm pretty good with everything but transient shapers and bus attachments bus attachments basically route the main channel into another channel that consolidates the tracks into one sound Say so you hard panned each guitar track to the left and to the right. Well, technically it would be to the left and to the right. I was focusing on your right and left. But anyway, that means nothing in the middle, right? However, you route those different tracks into one channel and turn that channel into mono, which is just a less wide version of stereo. If a song has an instrument in one ear and not the other, then it's not mono. But if the same song without change is put into a speaker that is only mono, then you will hear that sound in both ears, right? That's why stereo is nice and can add space to the music. Then there's this new thing called atmosphere mixing. And, but uh, I must say, I'm gonna stay away from that. Even though my music is more video game boss music style and would benefit from it, uh, I already have issues. I don't need more. But since bus attachments add more volume to the instruments, I need the volume level again after that. And when you do that, it kind of sort of becomes too quiet or too present in the mix. I've been told that this is where transient processors come into play, but I struggle to use them without them giving me very, very sharp frequencies I don't like. That hurts my ears. And then I add an EQ, and lo and behold, I mess up the stereo imaging somehow. And now I gotta figure out how to make it sound more wide. Or else, it not gonna sound right. I could go on, but you get the gist. This problem with mi with mixing, with mixing, with... This problem with mixing has been so bad that I wish to show you a list of songs that I've composed, lyricized, and are just waiting to be mixed with to perfection. 
before I release them. So I have an alternative metal project called Colonies Hope, which delves into various topics in various styles because I just want to be able to express my ideas and compose to my heart's content. Then I have my personal project called Desire of the Wise, which... Well, that this is one where I'm the lead singer and totally different from Colony's Hope. Colony's Hope is more aggressive lyric-wise and in your face, while also having songs about extreme grief and being lost in the torment of life. Desire of the Wise is more radio worthy, using melodies and admittedly cheesy lyrics. Red you can come with me, dear. Refuse to disappear. Take a pen into your hands. You can express yourself. I love you. All that cheese, just to let loose and be a bit childlike and young because I feel old. Heck, I'm only 28 and my barber asked me why I have white hairs. I don't know. Probably stress. I don't know. Anyway, over 170 songs ready to be released once they are mixed. You have to realize that I, that I want each song to be fantastic, right? And if I learned how to mix, I'd be able to release a new song every week for four years. That's weird to say, but it's true. And at the rate I'm making music like I am, within those four years, I could be making even more music for another four years. Ergo, in the span of a decade, I could theoretically create about half a thousand songs. Do you know how awesome that would be? I can make a song idea in four hours. And the only thing I got to do is take about seven months to tweak it. There's like one song that I've been trying to tweak for over a, a year and a half. And I don't know how to fix it. But each individual mixing thing, like, oh, you, you, you get someone else to do it. Well, that's dumb because it's $50 a pop. Do you know how much 50 times 170 is? That's a lot of music. And even then, I have issues singing and I don't get it right. I don't, I don't have the ability to do much because I don't really like singing when other people are in the house and I only got four days to myself sometimes, sometimes three, but then you get the whole nerve issue which is directly in my diaphragm area which is my vocal prowess, you know, if I tighten these muscles, they... Eventually it starts to hurt, like really, really bad. And I don't hurt. I don't say hurt like in, oh, my muscles are hurting. I'm, I'm talking like stinging. Stinging pain. Radiating throughout my body. Some say it's a medical issue. I say it's just stupid. Anyway. Tap the toe. Books. Books. This is where things get a bit dicey. You see? I am a poet. And I naturally write tons and tons of stuff. On average, I create around seven to 12,000 words a day. Right? Specifically in books. Actually, this this whole script that I'm reading from is 6,000 words, right? I wrote that in the span of five hours. I think I mentioned that later on. So naturally, I have several book projects that need to be mentioned because one might just come out this year. Here are the books I've already began, which is an unfortunate way to surmise this. Anyway, number one, The Elegies of Fading Quills. This is a short story compilation with currently 75,000 words. Number two, the ethereal womb. You heard it right. Womb. Womb. A fictional memoir to put you into the universe I'm creating for my VTuber. Me, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Me, Demo is breaking the fourth wall. Me, yes, I am the main character because it's a memoir. Come on. But it's not without character development and I say it's pretty good for, for a memoir. Eh. That's it currently sitting at 90,000 words right now. Then you have my baby. The Akashic Nocturne. This started out as a short story compilation too, but turned into a novella compilation that follows an overarching story. You'll be surprised. Yes, 
It is currently sitting at 100,000 words, give or take. It might be a few less. It might be a few more because I wrote some in it. I wrote 2,000 words yesterday, and I didn't calculate it before reading. But anyway. Number four, the absurd capitalist dinosaur zoo. This is one that was just a throwaway idea and was inspired by my videos with Lux when we played JPOG together over on uh, Rejoice Box Gaming. Those videos haven't released as of recording, but they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Lux is uh, my assistant. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon- But, but Lux gave okay, me some fine. like really, really, really good ideas. Like Snow, the Spinosaurus. How it evolved in like weird ways through mechanical engineering to survive in the desert snow. I say desert snow, but snow, snow plains are technically deserts. So yeah, but- then there's like, there's like this weird Kentrosaurus knockoff, which is different, kind of. But its spikes are made of jewels. And these jewels are on the, on the island that they bought. Or, shall I say, acquired accidentally <laughs> through the fault of an AI system. But that's currently sitting at 25,000 words. I'll talk about those later. Then there are two one-shot books, which I would want around 80k to 100k. These are the Circus of Blades, which is sitting at 40k right now, so it's almost halfway done. Then the Queen of Coyote, which is 30,000 words right now, and a lot more, how would you say, a mystery, military thing. This is not including those I started, but realized I needed to stop in order to get those these ones finished, you know, because I have this issue of starting having ideas and then starting to write those ideas and I get so ingrained in those ideas. I'm like, I need to write more. I have so many ideas. I cannot get writer's block. I cannot get writer's block. Some people was would be like, that's fantastic. I wish I had your skills. No, you do not because you start things and then you realize, oh no, this thing would be good for another story, not this specific story, mind you. So you go and write a specific story for that premise because it's such a good idea. And then you're like, dang it, now it started too much. And then so you just tumble down with ideas and you don't ever get enough time to just be single-minded. And that's the issue with me. I never get writer's block. I can get like stunted because I have other things on my mind, but... Usually, anytime I can't do something in regards to my creations, I don't have, or I have a problem that I'm focusing on that I can't focus on the work, right? So that's my issue. So I'm going to go through each to see how far I came at the end of the, at the end of the year. The Elegies of Fading Quills is just a compiled stories I've made over the years with various themes that are timeless themes. The stories range from 4K to 18K words, and I and it shouldn't be more than 150,000 words, so technically I'm halfway finished. There are about seven stories done, and I only need eight more. And then once that's done, I'll complete the overarching theme of a dryad girl reading all of those books to a dying tree, you know. Because the trees talk Dryads. are tree people, or tree women, I should say. But, yeah, I think it would be a good idea, you know, have an overarching theme to have in inside of a, you know, just not be like most writers and just say, hey, here's a compilation of short stories. Nah, fam, you gotta put something that ties them all together. That's what makes it grandiose. That's what makes it good. And I'll also come up with, like, another short story idea but for like small children, I, I made this really, really, really cute, but also really, really tragic story about the worth of a single cloud. And it's like really, really adorable, cute. It's written in such a way that a kid can, it's like you read a bedtime story to a child and I'm like, I will read this to my children. <laughs> of course, because the elegies, is it elegies or elegies? Because I've heard people say elegies, but I've always said it elegies. Maybe I'm wrong. It's probably the git, 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 git. But the elegies of fading quills, whichever how you want to say it, I'll probably get it told to me at one point. It's got some pretty, it's got some pretty dark stuff in there. Like really dark. 
like really, really dark. Like, there's this one story where I have, you're like, okay, so you know, like when, uh, like farmers, you know, cull chickens, right? Like they have like all these chicken, female chickens, and they raise chickens with eggs, right? A uh, male cannot lay an egg, regardless of what society says today. So, there are stories and things where they just throw all of those male chickens into a grinder alive, and I don't technically like that because you could do so much with those chickens. You could do so much, like a rooster. I mean, of course, sometimes you have to realize that you don't have the processes to raise a rooster because they're violent, like incrementally so. If anybody's ever been attacked by a chicken, you know, you know, roosters will hurt you. Not only that, roosters will hurt other chickens. If there's blood on any of a chicken, boom, they're going to eat it. They will literally chomp on. You, 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 you see those videos where it's like a chicken eating fried chicken and it's like <gasps> cannibalism. But no, they do that if the chicken is alive, dude and lady, if you are one, because Chickens are like literally raptors. They're like dinosaurs. They're the close to me. They're the closest living relative to a dinosaur, other than you know like the the emu or ostrich or no. Technically, the cassowary is probably the most dinosaur esque bird on the face of the planet. I would argue the kiwi is too, but they're just so adorable. I wanted to make a short story that would uh, switch the roles. Like, what if chicken oligarchs were like, yes, let's feed on the humans. And then you just see tons and tons of humans in, how would you say, cages. And then you just see tons and tons of babies tossed into a grinder. Yeah, that's not really something you would read to a child before they go to bed. That's not something you would read to, like, a normal person before you go to bed. That's something more along the lines of, uh, what would you call, no, what's the word? Cultural criticism, I guess. But, you know, there's a lot more wholesome stories in there as well. It's not all doom and gloom, even though some are really tragic. Some are really comedic, but mostly tragic. And the ending, oh, I've already planned it out. It's so good. I, I just, there's like this story where, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin it, but there's more people gonna read the book then more people are going to watch this video, but it's fine. Essentially, there is a, uh, there's a, pl there's a civilization amongst the stars. But, then there's this correlation of the stars and the constellations in the night sky going dark. They just don't know where they went. But, it's in the perspective of a girl who is losing her mother due to dementia. This is a representation of her mother losing her memories. Each star, a memory. And it's really, really, really poetic. And I really, really enjoy it, even though it is... I'm not going to say if it's a tragic or a comedy. Tragic being things don't turn out well. And comedy being everything turns out all right. Because you need to... You need to... You need to read it! If you want to read it! I haven't actually finished that part of the story. Short story. But it ties into the end of the story overall. And it's so good. It's so good. Anyway, moving on to the ethereal womb, which I promise I won't talk about as long, okay? Because there's a lot less to talk about. The ethereal womb is a tough one, considering the fact that I just reached the halfway mark and I'm just shy of 90k words. This book is going to take a lot longer because it's a lightweight mystery novel, recounting the life of a man who sought vigilante justice when the government did nothing, but found several worlds colliding into one within himself. Within him soul. Within, within his soul. Can't be drunk right now. I only took two sips. Musky Dine wine. Mississippi original. I prefer my red wine because it has, you know, those uh, anti-inflammatory stuff in it. But, oh well. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. I just gotta lighten up a bit because my shoulders hurt. Like a lot. Don't you see how stiff, stiff my shoulders are? Just really, 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 really stiff. The ethereal womb is... It was a... Okay, so I made a little animation in like six hours due to boredom using the same program that I used to make my VTuber model this thing mm-hmm yes look how garbage it is I mean it's not garbage garbage I mean like look at this do you see my neck it does not have the same shade as my face 
that's not right. And also, do you see my eye kind of jutting out of my face? That, uh, that that's, that's not supposed to happen. Like, for all of you who don't know, if I look this way, well, I'm looking right right now because the thing is mirrored, right? Because if it's not mirrored, I get, like, weird, weird mental problems in how I actually move. I need to be looking as if I'm looking in a mirror to actually fundamentally understand it's me I'm looking at, right? Because my mind will just throw itself off. And also, why am I doing this? I thought I said it was going to be short. The ethereal womb. The animation. It was short. It delves into the inhumanity of humanity. The complexity of being inhuman. Well, not inhuman as in the sense of like more. Well, yes. In the sense of being. Okay, it places the dichotomy. I haven't wrote this on the script. The dichotomy of being immoral while being human, but making that inhumane. However, also the other side of the coin, being inhuman in a genetic sense, but being more humane than most humans, right? Like when the human, human hero is inhumane, but the inhuman hero is the most humane, right? The dichotomy of that just is so good. It's just like, I haven't seen many stories that go delve into that part. And maybe it's because I haven't read much or, well, I have read. It's just the fact that I don't read off the kilter things, right? I'm getting kind of hungry. It focuses on the dynamic relationships as people mess up and change for either the better or the worse. And I love some parts, but I got to fix certain chapters to make it more concise. So I might lose about 10k words already written <laughs> because I, I, I kind of went too hard on it on a chapter. And it's like one chapter is like 10,000 words or 12,000 words long. I'm like, OK, I can dumb that down. I can dumb that down a lot. The Akashic Nocturne, as stated before, is my baby. I was pretty mad at the developers of Pokemon <laughs> for practically ruining the franchise with their lack of skills, even though Game Freak has the highest profit margin of any company in the known globe. They make so much money for having so few employees, they can hire the best of the best, but they don't. And while re replaying Pokemon Coliseum again, I got to thinking, what would it be like if I tried to make a game like this? It's a small feat compared to the open world games of today. It seems to be, it seems that most sacrifice fun and creativity for that open world, though. But this book was not necessarily meant to be a book, but it turned out that way. I had a short story called The Lonesome Librarian, which, you know, kind of ties into the Akashic Records, if you know what that is. It's basically a, a place where, like, uh, I'll, I'll mention it later. But I retroactively added that as the first novella. That short story, which then turned into a novella, was written like a year or something ago. But then I eventually added it on and then retroactively fit. And it works. It really works. The first story is like, oh, it tugs at your heartstrings. And yes, it is kind of cheesy because it's a romance thing. But anyway, now I will say, it's not like Pokemon. Even though it is inspired by it initially, technically the Colosseum game and XD. Maybe less XD and more Colosseum. I guess it'd be more like uh, Digimon where the creatures talk. Heck, I even call them Cosmies in the story. You know, cosmic beings, Cosmies, Digimon, digital monsters, Pokemon, Pokemon, po pocket monsters. That's what Pokemon means. I just don't put Mon at the end because they're not monsters. They're literally alien species that have cultures and stuff, but they're literally not monsters. Well, they have monster qualities, like really, really bad monster qualities. But those monster qualities are put into question during the time of the, vi uh, I was about to say videos, video game. <laughs> during the time of the writing, which adds to the character growth. Not everyone starts out like this, oh, this is a good goody two shoes. But anyone who does start out like that, fundamentally comes to realize that being good at tissues all the time is not a good idea. Especially when faced with, like, life-threatening stuff. Because, I don't know, you just have to read it. I'll, I will get to the point. 
but there there's not like hundreds or thousands. I think Pokemon just released its hundred one thousandth Pokemon in this last generation, and Digimon has like one thousand five hundred or so. But there's only seven of these Cosmies, and yes, they do evolve. But going into that would be spoiler territory, okay? The premise goes like this. Seven creatures are birthed from the great loves who are brought together through challenge and difficulty with the help of a librarian of the Akashic Records. That's a spiritual idea. The Akashic Records is, a, I think it's also Egyptian idea, where all records of God's knowledge reside, both in the past, the present, and the future of Christmas past. Now, <laughs> it knows all Christmases. <laughs> I'll just say that, even the ones before Christmas was born, even the ones after Christmas eventually goes extinct, because it probably will, or probably not, I don't know. But something happened in within the Ka Akashic Records, leaving the fate of the universe to be cheesily rested upon the love of seven couples. Yep, like I, I, I've said it multiple times, it's cheesy romance story with bouts of intense high stakes. But you will be happy to know I do not pull punches. If the villain seeks to to make someone go kablooey and remove them from the plane of existence, they will simply kill without a word. Unless killing is the is only the byproduct of a more grander test, which it sometimes is, but it's not all the time. So maybe it's spoiler territory to say that some characters die, but they're not resurrected at all. Resurrection is not a part of the story until... Actually, no, I don't think Resurrection is a part of the story at all. Which is a lot of pet peeves for a lot of readers like myself. I mean, sure, Dragon Ball did it, but what's the stakes of Resurrection, right? Like, when Jesus died, everybody's like, he is resurrected. But you don't realize that he's still... That after, in the book, he's like, I have not yet ascended to the Father. And you realize, oh crap. If God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are all the Trinity, that means God, for three days, was, like, he was literally separated from himself. I equate that to being, like, all of your organs just suddenly evaporate, and then you have to try to live, because you can't die, you're God, right? And then you gotta live with all, without your organs for at least three days. I'm a, I'm actually heard somewhere that surmise like is like a day a two days and a half technically which technically sums up to three days because they did that back in zero A.D. and technically throughout thousands of the years of history but that's not the point the point is resurrection needs a very 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 painful price and even in the Bible I think most people miss it that there is a very very painful price for the main character which is in essence God. Right? Even if you don't believe in this stuff, this is really fascinating. Which I believe in this stuff, and if you don't believe, hey, I respect your opinion. But, taking it at story value, the price was the denial of self. Right? And thus, it proves, later on, Jesus was like, okay, deny yourself for me. Because I denied myself for you. And that leads credence to what he's asking us to do. You know, be better human pe human people, right? <laughs> Although a lot of people sometimes get it wrong. But this isn't about religion. Even though this story, the Akashic Records, has parallels to religion. It's just not, you know, shoehorned in. There's a lot of parallels, but there's enough differences to say, to, to showcase that, hey, this is really, really different. But there are references that those who are knowledgeable about like, religion and stuff will say, oh, I got that reference. And then you realize what I'm actually talking about. Because it's far easier to make a short story or a novella within 35,000 words. 30 to 45. If it becomes 40,000 words, it becomes a novel. 30,000 words, it's a novella, which means it's a light novel. Which is technically what a light novel in Japanese is, right? It's from 30k words to 40,000 words. I've read a lot of light novels, babe. Anyway. Okay, so, very important thing about the cheesy romance stuff. I don't go into lovemaking. Though it does sometimes get close, and the complexities of those feelings become apparent later on as demons begin to manipulate those emotions of the characters. Even the Cosmies. Because they're not safe. They're not safe at all. They're not safe in the slightest. 
oh, if you know the story, well, you don't know the story. What am I saying? The issue is I, I've wrote, I've written the preface, right? The preface is the story before the story. I do not know. I, I think I want to put the a, a, a note at the starting of the book saying the preface is on chapter seven. I'll say the preface is on chapter seven because it is the entire recounting of the preface to the actual starting of the story because it's kind of like this. I don't know. It just makes it better if you don't know what actually is occurring because when you go in, you're thinking, oh, this is about two lovebirds who don't start out liking each other at all, who actually are not technically lovebirds, even by the point where you realize, oh man, this is something more grand. But you look at it and it's like, oh wait, the whole arcing of this overarching story is, oh, this is nuts. And it's like this grandiose tale and I can't wait to finish it because like literally I write it. Start shaking when I'm writing some very intense parts, and sometimes I shed a, like this lone tear off of my eye down to my cheek, and then my tongue goes Aah! and licks it off <laughs> in comedic fashion. Because I don't know, it's something like from my heart. I write these things, and I get so attached to it. Maybe it's because I'm a writer, and I just get so involved in it. It's weird, but I hope I can do that for the viewer. And yes, some people will say, well, it might sound a bit preachy in some parts. I want to, like, fix those parts that sound a bit too preachy. And maybe a lot of people are crying a bit too much. But when you have, like, 30,000 words to convey an entire story between, like, five people or more, you can't just rush through it, else people will feel that like it's too rushed. But... You have to show emotions. So you show emotions in the most grandiose of ways. So you have to exaggerate it just a bit because of the length is limited, right? I don't want people to read it and have to wait through like 300,000 words. Blech. I don't want that. But I have let people close to me read a few novellas within and they say character development is really fluid and believable and actually want to read more. And yes, it was more than just my mom and girlfriend. I read it to my dog and she barked in approval, I think. But with this one, I'm making it in such a way that there can be a censored version for younger kids. Yes. Since this story can appeal to all audiences by the way I'm writing it, I just don't want kids to see lines like... Now, it is time for inappropriate quotes from the Akashic Nocturne. Dude, if I vomit violently every time I kiss the opposite gender, I'd willingly about face from my sexuality and go right into fencing. Stay quiet, miss. It's unbecoming for a woman to get in the middle of two men unless it's a spit roast. If you were married, I'd hand you a box of condoms. Or a particularly graphic scene that I poetically handled with the utmost, the utmost of care. Because halfway through it goes into severely heavy topics and traumatic experiences children might not get initially, but overall can understand the pain of the character. It's like sometimes when, you know, you are a child and you see the cartoons, and sometimes there are lewd jokes in the cartoons. You don't get it initially, but when you're an adult, you're like, I get it, that's pretty funny. <laughs> but this one's not gonna be funny. This is not gonna be funny at all. And I say that with a, with a straight, I say that with a smiling face, it's not gonna be funny. Not gonna be funny. But. Yeah, of course, there is cursing too, which is colorful enough to where I can change it and it be consistent. I don't think the whole, now you can't kiss anyone but your one true love, else you'll upchuck the contents of your stomach magic thing hasn't been used before, has it? Tell me in the comments if you've read a book that does that. That's a really neat idea, but I think somebody's already used it. I, don't, I can't name the story though. I don't even know the story exists. But it's just too good of a concept not to have been used before, right? Anyway, I'll, I've already got the ending planned. And loose ends are already tied. It's weird, even though I haven't finished it yet. But in time, I'm sure I'll get it, right? The Circus of Blades and Queen of Coyote are one-shots, and I don't want to talk about them too much. Just know that the Queen of Coyote has a song in it that influences the main character's actions. And I've already written that song. Oh yeah, the Akashic Nocturne also has a lot of music in it. 
and I'm creating music precisely for the scenes. As per, as per the nature of the story. I love it. I love it. I love it, so, I love it so much. There's this one song that needed to be made in four hours, right? Four hours. So I set up a timer and I made a song within four hours to match the motif of the story. And I was surprised how good it came out. It's not, it didn't sound like absolute crap, though it, it was very simple and it really is simple. Another part of the next novella after the first one, the lady playing the guitar only knew two chords. Okay, two chords. And she was more terrified to change from one chord to the next without keeping time. So I made it believable while the Cosme sung a ballad. Okay, it's so cute. And I'll probably put it at the end of the video because it, it's, it, it's, I, I don't know. I even put a string breaking sound at the end of that song to mimic what happened in the story. Maybe this is stupid. Maybe this is really stupid to combine books and music. But it, it's not my best work in music either. But it means something to me, you know? And I guess that is all that matters, right? As long as it means something to me, at least one other person in the span of, I don't know, 8 billion? will find it good. At least. I just have to put my heart and soul into it. You know what? I'll leave the acapella version of the song on the outskirts of the video. I don't sing it though. You can thank my girl Solaria for that. She also sings most of Colony's Hope songs, adding a female vocal to the grindiness of the metal music. But... None of those are released yet, ergo, why I'm making this video. Chapter 3. Video Gooms. This is going to be a shocker. I wanted to be a game developer. Yes, you are shocked. But couldn't. Therefore, I made no games. I did make this one game. I did, I did make this one game in the Cry Engine. There was, like, it, Cry Engine is a first person shooter type of thing. I went to make a door, right? I opened the door with the character. He opened the door, the door got stuck on his hand, and it just slapped him across the body until he fainted and died. And then when I resurrected, you know, respawned, I say resurrected, but respawned back at where the, in the hills, away from the door and the house, the door decided to come to life and circle through all of the trees directly to me to brutally murder me again. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that. I gave up. I gave up after that. That was the weirdest experience I've ever had. But with the development of AI and ChatGPT, along with coder helpers like GitHub Copilot, which I've got a free trial on right now, I probably won't spend $10 every month considering uh, uh, the constrictions I have on my money problems right now, which technically isn't much problems, but I've been successful enough to make or start several things. One. A clicker game. Two, a centipede-like game. It was one of my favorite games as a child, okay. Three, a visual novel engine I call Polysemy. Okay, so all these things are pretty easy to make. They are freaking not. <laughs> or maybe it's me adding so freaking much to the game ideas that it's really, really hard because, okay, here's the game ideas. The clicker game is up in the air for the title, but it's gonna be something around, uh, Queens of Might, or uh, uh, a Regnant Love, or something, something like that. But essentially, in 0 AD, there were a lot of kingdoms. You know, Rome controlled vastly the known world at that point. These kingdoms had different cultures and differing views on various topics. And as a lover of history, I looked into those kingdoms, gathering books and such, essentially getting a cohesive idea that each kingdom could be a woman personified right? As many kingdoms say about their kingdom. You know, if it wouldn't be any different than saying the United States should not allow herself to ignore the plight of the weary. America, son! Which is a poetic personification that most everyone agrees is perfectly viable to say. So I set up seven kingdoms with anime waifus. Yes. Now you ha now have you ever played the free clicker game Crush Crush? I did. And I still do. It's like the Ocarina of Time for me. I come back to it, just on a different device years later. Yes, even Nutaku, don't ask. But anyway, it's going to be a free phone game. But I wanted to spice it up a bit with the monetization stuff and... Uh, okay, so hear me out. And you know, make it a point to not be greedy like everybody else. I do not intend to place invasive ads on it. 
because I kind of want to be proud of the game and play it whenever I want to as well without being annoyed at it. I also do not want to make it like Crush Crush and just keep amping up the difficulty where you have to wait a month for even completing one extra level at the high end of the game. I'm not about that, okay? So I'm making it where each character should be able to be beaten within 10 hours of just basic clicking, sometimes factoring in upgrades or not. Essentially, the shop is going to be run by Lux, who already has voice lines. There's also a gotcha system, which I'll, gi I'll give you her voice line, just, yeah. Place Lux shop gotcha system voice line here. Hold on there, Jethro. This gotcha system isn't like most other games. This system was made by a poor gamer for even poorer gamers. I'm sure you've seen some predatory gotcha systems in games, so rest assured, you're going to get a lot for your money here. The legal laws force me to tell you your chances, so you can find that in the percentage button to the side. There are 19 sellable items that can stack, so you'll likely get multiples, and you can choose from the repertoire of which you can get if you wish to buy directly for either in-game papyrus or with real money. Unsellable items are different, as you cannot stack them, but that also means any unsellables you have already will be erased from the gacha system, so there is no worry of paying money to get something that isn't usable, which is against our code of ethics. We pride ourselves with a player experience, where you can pay real money to get to the end faster, or you can use your knowledge skills to get more papyrus by answering questions. Basically, if you're bad with memory and have no money, you're going to be playing for longer, which is still better than college. Yeah! And I have decided to equate the real USD a player may use to one hour of progress in the game, right? Though, not directly, as unlike most other gotcha systems. I'm making it where you can outright buy what you want. I even want to put in a randomized sale system every 24 hours to turn, like say, a, okay, let's use the one, a $1 item into increments of 25% off. You know, like 50% off, 75% off, 100% off sometimes. Yeah, I'll do it. The items never actually go above 50 cents a pop though. So I want to be very clear. So if you spend a dollar, you could probably get two items at full price. Two, yeah. This is just an example because dollars, a hundred dollars, and you know, percentages are easier to use in your brain, you know? So if you see something 50% off on a dollar item, you can spend one dollar to get two of that item, right? Now this isn't, you know, like one dollar as in one dollar, one dollar USD, but I'll... I'll get to that. The random, just hear me out, just hear me out. Okay, just hear me out. The randomization thing also needs to have each item off, but never have each one off two times in a row to prevent an item from possibly never having a sale. Of course, you have several items, okay? You have your specie, which are coins. That's what they called coins in back in the day. You have Kingsman and Papyrus, or Papyrus, wh whichever way you want to say it. Each have their own uses, but overall, if you have too much of one thing, but don't want to spend actual money, or at, at all, because the game is literally meant to be played without you actually having to use money. You just use money if you're a whale, and you just want to say, hey, or you just want to support the game and, you know, business practice of, you know, not being invasive in your face. You can transform those excess materials, funny calling Kingsman, materials but oh well into well faux money i guess which i guess is the specie like rewards from shops and stuff if you have enough you can buy however much you want whatever you want outside of buying the win scenario okay this is also why you can sell some treasures because you have sellable treasures and you have unsellable treasures as a stack for your progress. But if you need something now, you can sacrifice that treasure for what I want to be a major boost in whatever you trade for. Though, I am trying to set up being able to trade a sellable treasure for another sellable treasure. That implementation might be a bit too hard for me starting out right now, and maybe an update later on when I get more knowledgeable. Also, the game can be beaten, as in it has an end game, okay? The more you learn about the kingdom, the more you, questions you receive in a fun visual novel style date with that queen, as personified by the kingdom. And the more questions you get right, the more you earn via the rewards. 
This does mean you have the option to farm, but if you already have been on that date, you can simply just take five question, a five question test to get stuff without go going through the date again, right? Once all that is done, I want to implement a war system, an assassination chance, which will heighten the chance of you losing some progress for added tension and forcing you not to piss off the characters. I assure you it won't be a Dark Souls style death scenario and how much progress you lose, just the current level with the queen, okay? Of course, there are far more kingdoms within 0 AD than just 7, so once it's out, I can focus on making more. The more I make, the more treasures I will freely give, and thus I want all people to be of varying strategies to prevail, right? Most devs get billions from whales and are prioritized to serve them. But no, I, I, I look at it a bit differently. Yes, whales exist with tons and tons of money, but if a whale doesn't want to spend their money and wants to use their brain and time instead, like just enjoy themselves, blindly clicking on a video game, why would I incentivize them to give me money when learning something new about the world is literally my main mission? Tell me that. I just want some money on the side for my hard work. And digital money in-game is just digital money. I can recreate it however much I want. And since it isn't reality, inflation won't exist. Wouldn't that be great if that also applied to real life? Overall, this game is my decree to the mobile gaming community. If, it, if this bra does bring success, it will hopefully incentivize developers to actually create moral games that are fun instead of bombarding you with ads or making you wait until you increase your energy, which will... I will never do in this game because I hate that. Not only that, I always start the game over when I p play test. Do you know how freaking hard that would be if I was like, oh, you have to wait four hours to continue the play test. And then the moment you click off the game in the engine, that you just lose all of your progress. That's dumb. Why would I do that to myself? So that's the thing. If I can't do it, in one stretch of time during my uh, play testing, it's not going to be implemented into the video game. Okay? Your progress is however much you're able to click. And also remember from, you know, n your knowledge. And like I said, 10 hours per character. However, I am making it 100 hours per character based on the initial one click per heart. I if you double that click to two using a sellable treasure, which you can get just by, you know, answering questions if you don't have any money. It becomes 50 hours, but four is 25 hours. 100 hearts per click is one hour, okay? With how freely I'm giving the products, products as in digital products, as in you'll get it free. Sometimes I, I do plan to have like this randomized day on the calendar where my phone just says, hey, release an update that gives people money. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. It would incentivize bad practices in reality and make people believe that you can just have money, that the government can just give you money and nothing would go awry, even though that is literally how Rome fell. Games are not supposed to be reality. Don't take this as being reality because inflation does exist. I'm not going to go make the sellable treasures increase the click anywhere below 50%. Okay. Anywhere below 50%, I think. Hold on. Is it 50%? Do, 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 do. Is it 50%? This is... Okay, wait, hold on. Okay, so these are the unsellable treasures. The unsellable treasures are going to boost your upgrades via times instead of percentages from what I've got. And according to this, there are 24 sellable treasures. 19 sellable treasures. Wait, hold on. No, I'm, I'm wrong. 13 unsellable treasures will do something. But instead of percentages, I've actually got it set up as times. Okay, here's, here, here's one. Hold on, if I can do this. Okay, let's say... Okay, I started with the most powerful one first. Let's say you got the crown of Alexander, right? This magnificent golden crown once adorned the head of the great conqueror, Alexander the Great! It's intricate... Craftsmanship and historical significance make it a highly sought-after artifact. It's said that whoever wears this crown is unworthy shall die a gory and painful death. Unless they just don't care. But we care about you, don't we, Adolf? Also, I should mention, there is lore in this. A lot of lore. 
for all you lore puppies out there that like game theory, yo, you gonna love it. Oh, you gonna love it. I've crafted, like, things. Things. A lot of things. Anyway. Eh. Aleph's a bit shy. Don't pay him any more, any more mind. So the boost upgrade for this Crown of Alexander is 7x. So if you click once and you get one heart, if you have this, which is the most rare, because as you see, the more you go down, it's 6, 6, 6, 5, 5, 5, 2, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and it goes into unsellable treasures. See, it'll always, at least you, you, every treasure you'll get at least double, right? Boost upgrade double. The Silk Road map. Interconnectedness is underlined for some reason. You are creeped out by this for some reason. I mean, it's the Elgin Marbles. Ooh, do you know about the art? No. Shut up, Demo. The Elgin Marbles are not... I'm... I'm I'll do a video on the Elgin Marbles. Oh, this creepy stuff. Anyway, I should probably stop this specifically. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, this is because I don't know how to calculate 50% of one when factoring in the coding of the game. So every treasure will double the initial click's power, right? And you have to converse with the lady to make even more hearts. So naturally, if you're a whale and buy $60 worth of items, you've essentially beaten the game already, okay? Which is ironically no fun, but hey, if you have, if you're like a millionaire and you have tons and tons of stuff and you want to experience the, the story instead of, you know, working for it, I mean, I guess, thank you for your patronage, I, I enjoy your company. This means that each queen will not have a difficulty spike, which I hate, especially on clicker games. The difficulty comes from you and your knowledge of the kingdom and how good your memory is. All of which has been said within the game already. But I'm putting this here because I'm having coding issues. So, in time, I will see what happens. I'll also need to draw characters from their 3D models. They're not perfect 3D models, but, you know, give them a little bit of flair when I draw them. It'd be perfect, you know? I've also got music that I think are memorable. Next game. That took a long time. How long is this been going on? An hour? I've been talking for an hour? No, fam. Oh, no way. I haven't even gotten halfway through yet. Anyway, next game. Oh, yeah, I'm on chapter three. Never mind. But uh, there was an issue in the visual novel RPG type thing I made where I need to learn how to code a certain thing. Okay. But it reminded me of Centipede. You know, the arcade game. It was one of my favorite games in the past. It was so simple, but it was so click worthy. So I set out to create a Centipede clone to give myself some creative edge in my learning. As I do constantly. Technically, the issue, the clicker game, was also a learning experience that I did the same way. But I learned how to click, you know, the stuff for the visual novel. Because I did the clicker game for the visual novel, how to, you know, the words on the screen, you click, boom, you got it. It goes to the next sentence and phrase. I did that for the clicker game, and then I learned how to do it for the visual novel. It's like, the visual novel game, right? That's good. I've already named this specific centipede style game for Beulah. And I've taken inspiration from Centipede and Toho. So this is a very small game. I don't intend to sell unless I decide to make it bigger. And even if I do sell, I'm like, eh, maybe a dollar. But this one won't have any monetization whatsoever, okay? So your name is Tamar, a little angelic being that needs to be net. Oh, hold on. Let me just, hold on. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. So here's the thing. You are Tamar, this, this girl right here. I can't zoom in because it won't capture the photos window I have open for some reason. Wait, could you see that? No, I bet you couldn't. Anyway, you are Tamar, a little angelic being that needs to defend Beulah, also known as the promised land amongst the stars from the ravenous Nubula, Nubula Nips. No, wait, I can't change the name else it'll break in unity. Oh crap. Well, anyway, anyway, uh, you are fighting against these guys. This is the centipede head. This is the centipede body. But this is a comet. I am make trying to make like fire go around it during the time it's actually floating through space. Anyway, these things are trying to devour the great forbula. I mean, Bula, which is the promised land. Imagine centipede, but the mushrooms are asteroids moving in space, and the centipede, which is a line of sentient comets. They can nab your power-ups, which is this thing. It says health pack, but I really just want to make it like, I want to make this, the health pack, the magic thing, 
Like you get it, you have a chance to get a certain power up, but every time you shoot an enemy and destroy it, or an asteroid and destroy it, this is an asteroid part one, and then there's asteroid part two. You shoot it, you have a 25% chance to get a health pack, which is a health pack. It's not technically for health, I need to rename it, but it's your uh, upgrade pack. You can get a life from it, but you can also get health from it too. And these are your shots, and this is the background, because it's, you know, something. And this is a space guard. We don't talk about those yet. They can nab your power-ups, and they can upgrade themselves, right? I don't remember Centipede ever doing that. Of course, I've only played the one game, except, well, no, Millipede 2. The only issue is, I'm having a great deal of trouble coding the Nebula Nymphs, because they follow the Centipede-style line. However... They don't act right when their hitboxes connect to the bottom or the asteroid that comes sometimes goes right through them. So I'm trying to figure out that issue. I got this far in three days. So naturally, I want to keep going. But I've already Ouch. designed other another enemy for another level and a boss attack to spice Ouch. things up. I have to say that the, half of this is AI art. Okay, I and half of it is failure. not, because I tend to make AI art go in and trace over it to make it work, because Tamar looked like this before I chibified her. The first asteroid pick is m my drawing, but the second is AI pixel art, and when it is actually pixel art, I usually go in and redraw over it to make it look good. I don't think anyone would care if I use that. Not like I'm copywriting a freaking asteroid PNG. Come on. In fact, I'm wondering if I should just make this game copyright free much like Toho. Though, I want some rights to any anime. And ask that you don't retroactively ruin the cohesive nature of the story I'm creating. Which is probably not much. And yes, the voice I'm using is AI too. But it's a friend of mine who gave me permission. I always use AI with caution and make sure you have the rights to use it, okay? Use it with care and make sure you own all the rights and stuff. Those who say no one has a right to use AI in this way are usually biased beyond their vision and refuse to see nuance. Those who refuse to see nuance can't really be listened to since they aren't applicable to alternative arguments or and legalities. But anyway, that's my issue, future me. Next game, Polysemy is a video game engine I'm trying to make for visual novels with slight RPG elements I am personally creating. I have one visual novel starting out with the story completed. It is such a story. I mean, it was technically a short story, but I started writing it in a weird theatrical way with scene changes and stuff, and I was like, this proved pretty good as a visual novel. So, I made it. I just need to continue drawing the characters, creating music, and other such things like finishing the script for the Polysemy Code. I don't think I'm going to sell this game engine for or freely give it like Renpai is because it's a, a visual novel engine. Since the RPG elements are a creation that I thought out and haven't seen before. So I want it to be a specialized tool for Rejoice Box interactive game creations. But that also means anyone who comes onto RBI and wants to make visual novels from the ground up, I'll let them use it. But right now, the engine is pretty primitive in its development. I will finish it one day, but like I said, this is why I'm making for Beulah right now. Because there's a, a similar thing. But I will say, the first story I've made for this visual novel game is really, really sad. It's really sad in the sense that you feel bad, like really bad, but... Then it has the point of the story. The point of the story is like fighting through the sadness and stuff. It's like really sad and it's... No, I can't describe it. It's sad. And basically the moral of the story is take the bad with the good. I've even made like emotional music for it. And I listen to one song and I'm like, I want to cry. Painful times hold my failing heart within Storm. Though my crimes have me tailored to grief like an art form. 
because I wrote it from a place of a darkness in my own heart because I've dealt with loss before and this the story is about loss and hopefully somebody will actually take it and feel better realizing that the story is supposed to be supposed to be good for you get it I think the wine did something to my head <laughs> overall the games I'm making I want to be a testament to the gaming community to say hey Stop focusing on money or not offending people by firing them and actually make games the developers want to play and enjoy playing. That means I, I make what I enjoy, of course. But luckily for everyone, I quite enjoy quite a bit of games. My favorite game is by far Alan Wake. That was way back in 2008, mind you. And then the new game, I haven't played it yet. Don't spoil anything. I already know it's golden. But anyway... Then you got Pokemon, which I actually had like science and math all in my brainstem for how to beat things and all these other games. Like I enjoy games, right? I enjoy tons and tons of styles of games. And then they go and ruin it, right? Pokemon, ruined. Alan Wake, not ruined. But it took him like 2008 and 2023. I do not count Control or American Nightmare as a full Alan Wake game. It took almost 16 years for this to occur. But anyway, that's the point. Heck, Disgaea 7 just came out, right? Disgaea is one of my favorite games in franchises. I haven't played Disgaea 6. I don't care about it. But I've even erected an idea similar to Disgaea called Elysia, which is similar storytelling elements, but also turn-based combat in that style. I figured since Disgaea went 3D this time, I'd eventually get enough money to hire someone to make tons of 2D sprites and animations to give people an option for that classic Disgaea feel without being Disgaea anymore. More focusing on the heavenly realms instead of the lower realms, right? Of course, it's not like demon against demon like most Disgaea games. It's more like heaven and hell against a new absent abyss. I don't know. I'll, 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 form, I'll formulate it out more as time goes along. Yeah, of course, that it is a cheap knockoff, but it's one of my favorite games, and why would I not want to take inspiration as long as I don't just straight up lift things from the game and onto mine? Because I'm an ethical human being, okay? I, I want to craft uniqueness without being too similar. Else no one has fun, and I'm sued for everything I've got. Another one I thought up of was because of the Skullgirls issue. It's a fighting game where the developers retroactively removed a lot of things that gave the game its charm. So I decided to take what, what gave it its charm and apply it to a competitor style fighting game named Philosophilia or Vacant Philia. Obviously adding my own spin to the charm, though it's still in its baby stage. And technically, I don't really have much to go on because it'll probably be a decade before this game comes out. <laughs> with it being a fighting game, it needs a fighting system, right? Well, I've already got it on paper with it being much like Marvel vs. Capcom 3v3. Except there are three classes named Warrior, Lover, and Philosopher along with things called... And you're probably going to hate it. You're probably going to hate it very much. But if you know Skullgirls, you'll know where I'm going with this. Crystal Hearts or Fleshly Holes. Like I said, if you know Skull Girls, Skull Girls, then you know why I chose those names. If players perform optimally via skill, because fighting games require skill, since no monetization will ever be involved, obviously, they obtain increased stats to power up totem crystals capable of granting exclusive weapons slash techniques according to their affinities. Players earn crystal hearts slash fleshly holes as a signifier of proficiency called heat or cold status. There are 35 crystal hearts and 34 fleshly holes to make a nice total. I can't say that with a straight face. The skills you can pull from are health, stamina, attack, defense, speed, something called the O metric. This is the bar that fills up to perform an ultimate attack because every fighting game needs that. The skill points help to raise it by a certain percentage every successful attack. And there is a bond, which this increases the fighting bond between the other two characters, cheering the fighter on from the three categories, lover, warrior, and philosopher. But again, 
This is going to come out in like a decade because I'm poor, have no money, and can't hire anyone to do anything. So, so I do it all myself. How are you doing? And I can't code worth a crap. But the game engine Polysemy, the Queen Clicker game, and Forbula is the only games I've actually put into code. The process is if I need to do something for a big project, I make a tinier project game to make it easier to understand outside the given exclamation point hashtag at exclamation point context. Why did I do that? I didn't curse there. I didn't intend to curse there. Ergo, I'll be able to implement it better and I'll have a fun game to play on the side and build so I can throw it out to anyone who wants to play it. But I'm only one human being after all. Chapter 4. Videos. Oh dear. I have too many videos on back order. However, Adobe Premiere Pro, my editing software, updated to where I can erase every bit of silence. Okay. Which means I can absolutely eradicate one hour from a two and a half hour recording session in the span of half a minute. This is saving me so much time, I really don't see how I can churn out. I can't. I don't see how I can't churn out videos at this point. Heck, I used this power on this video and you didn't even know it! You didn't even know it! <laughs> oh, that wine. That wine's something else, baby. I haven't even drank half a cup. Oh, I'm sorry, I drank more than a cup. Oh, I drank two cups. <coughs> Might as well finish it off. You know, it was actually pretty good wine. The initial taste was garbage, but the last one was pretty good. <coughs> Need some water now. Always hydrate children. Even if you're 186 years old, I'll just call you a child. Because you need to be a child at heart. But no joke, yesterday I just edited the silence off of 10 videos. 10 plus hours of content. 10 plus hours! There's this one video that took like 8 hours with me and my girlfriend just playing Kirby's Forgotten Lands. It took, well, it was actually 8 and a half hours. In the span of one minute, I have completely erased two, no, close to three hours of silence. And usually it takes double the amount to edit the silence, right? So it would have taken me 16 hours to delete all of that silence. I just saved myself 16 hours. Do you know how much I'm excited for this year in terms of videos? Well, anyway, I'm also delving into animation. Very short animations, not long ones. With the advent of Lux being able to have conversations now, I can do so much more with her to create fun videos. <laughs> Though, like me, she talks quite a bit. This is where you put the end of episode 5 of the Lux thing. With whimsy in our hearts. We embark on this Come on, journey. Lux, I gotta use the bathroom. One part paleontological I gotta use the bathroom. investigation, one part hilarious dino happenstance. Oh, to be assaulted by acute ecological embarrassment Shut is up, near please. chaos. Wearing formal asactus groves. Wearing formal asactus <laughs> groves? What does that mean? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. What do you Hold mean, on. demo? No. You can't be done now. Hey, done for today. Done for today. Mister. Yes, I did animate Lux running from a T Rex. How did I do? Pretty bad, right? Yeah, I think I did awful too. But I still need to release all the videos on back order. I completed this guy 7, and frankly, I've gotten pretty close to 30 videos alone on that one. And with this new editing strategy, I can I might can turn out like 20 minute videos one after another. My throat is getting really tight. If only I didn't have to go in a soup in and super edit the entire thing to make it enjoyable to watch, even if nobody watches it. Which devolves into another problem. Nobody watches my videos. Well, some do, but not at the rate I used to have. I have a routinely uploaded for about eight years or so. And I've gotten around the same views throughout the years, even though I've released over 1,000 videos. Some are heavily edited and very high production quality and pretty funny, but I, I, I even come back to them. That's how funny they are. That, but that's just me. Also, this year... I'm going to upload more to this channel, however, I wanted to upload every Monday here on this channel, but as with all of what I'm doing, on top of family life and lack of money, I have, take, I have to take things in stride, so one video a month or every few weeks might be a better equipped for this specific uh, channel, but I have plans. Chapter 5 website! Rejoice Box Interactive has both a website and a Discord in the works. I have a few mods for the Discord since they also want to be VTubers and are going to be extre going to be eventually. I read that as extremely. They both make music and other things outside of VTubing and st with streaming like most do because they don't stream. 
I don't stream either, even though, like, do you know how much... I've rambled for an hour and 30 minutes. Do you think I can actually stream? No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're never gonna make me gonna stream. Unless for, like, a charity, which I will... I will sacrifice my self-esteem for that. But until then, no. I want Rejoice Box Interactive to be a place where VTubers can come to create things outside of VTubing, to give meaning to a more grander legacy in their personal format and uniqueness without being corporate overlord dictating what they can or cannot do. My lips are numb. That wine's super powerful. Also, I, I drank on an empty stomach. I just realized this. I'm not tipsy. Maybe I've been talking too long. Looking at the microphone over here. But anyway, I guess RBI would be similar to V Shoujo. Just not with a non-transparent contract, I suppose. Every word of the contract is written on the website and will be digitally signed via all who join. But I at least need to know who you are, what you do, and you've got to have a model and a few pieces already released or proof you have things capable of being released so you can learn new things from the others who know more about which you need to ha need help with or something. You're like, you know, I'm a pretty helpful guy, even opting to create VTuber models for them, but I, I don't make them well. I showed you about the neck thing. I showed you about the eye thing and stuff like that. Meh. Also, what is my tongue doing half the time jutting out of my my chin? Watch this. What? Why? Why? Watch this. Wait, wait. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. What does that mean? Why am my tongue doing that? I, I don't know. Nobody can tell me why. Tell me why, 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 That's weird. Hopefully this year I'll get a better model. Oh yeah! Wanna see something gnarly? Yeah. Do you see my teeth jutting out of my facial structure? That's gotta be weird. I can't do that. So I can talk normally like this. But you, you, all my teeth go right out of my cheeks. I don't really understand. Why is this doing this? That's creepy. Uh, so anyway. That ain't right, baby cakes. So for the first few years, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold auditions for, or anything like that. But I will say that I will grant anyone on RBI a personal website that connects to the main website that is paid for up to a year. And then, you're, and then that's your responsibility afterward as I trade the rights over to you completely. Now, see, here's the thing. I want to make it... I want to have live streaming on RBI's website. The only issue is it takes $4,000 to create a... Uh, what do you call it? Server. That's the word. Brain. And with a server... Well, it doesn't take $4,000 to create a server. It takes $4,000 to create a 180 terabyte server. However, the technology I'm using, well, not using now, but the only option I do have to use costs about $200 a month to actively have a streaming option on the website. That is obviously a no-go statement right there. You can't just pay $250 a month. What are you, nuts? So obviously it's not going to start out with streaming, but over time when I get more and more and more and more money, I might just be able to hire someone to code it into my website without having to pay other people, right? But of course, with the th this amount of graciousness, I can't simply just do that for someone I don't know. Over time, things will naturally occur and I will come to know more people. Thus, those people, if I know them well enough, can be granted access. Almost like a VIP thing, because it's, I don't want to make it like a, a social media thing where anyone can just come up and do things, because that there are laws out there, ladies and gentlemen. I do not do good with laws. If there is a law I don't like, I usually don't follow it, but oh well. You didn't hear that from me. Of course, that may be a bad business practice, but I try to follow the law as best as I can. If I don't agree with it, I will follow it, but begrudgingly. Okay? Especially when it's money or tax involved. You don't want to get on the bad side of the IRS even though they're a scumbag company that doesn't deserve to exist. Yes, they are a company. I don't care what you say, government. It is a company. It's the government's company. Bad company. And of course, if anyone comes on, since they have their own model ready and everything else, everything they own belongs to them. The only thing is, they are showcased on the main website or YouTube channels to help put their work into eyes of another person's fans. 
This way we can cross promote projects we aren't even a part of. I'm the type of guy to say, hey, my girlfriend is making soap candles and knitted stuff. Go support her. Yo, this dubstep album is sick. Even though I don't like dubstep, I can appreciate my bro's affinity for the skill that's required to make it. Kind of sort of like that. The only thing is the biggest, I say that a lot. Why did I say that a lot? The only thing is, but everything is the only thing. I don't know what my brain is doing. The biggest rule is to not be a dick. Do not be a dick. I also have lawyers to help out, well, lined up lawyers. Some don't know me, some I've asked questions to already. To help me with any legalities with copyright or trademark disputes. And if anyone gets a little too weird toward people who are of the non-adult variety. Let me change facial structure for this. Now, I don't intend to simply let underage people anywhere near the website or content considering laws and disputes of other countries. So I simply state, we do not track anything other than your IP address for security purposes. All donations are transacted through Stripe and not through us. If you want, you can donate to me via Buy Me A Coffee. Link in the description. If you go to my website, which is demo.rejoicebox.com, you'll also see the same thing there. All donations are through Buy Me A Coffee for me. For me. For me. For me. For me. For other people, maybe different. I don't know. My girlfriend kind of uses coffee. Coffee as in not Buy Me A Coffee, but coffee. Co-dash-fi, right? Which means each individual person has their own donation portal, you know? We get nothing of your information we do not wish to share. Or you do not wish to share. Ugh. Because we don't really do ads. We make products at Rejoice Box. Why would we do ads? I don't know. Maybe we'll... Maybe I'll have to set up an ad thing to get a little bit more money on the side as starting out, but over time when we get more money, we'll just abandon ads. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really debating which one we're going to do. We're going to do. I say we, but it's just me because I only have the. I'm the only person who knows about the back end, and everybody else is like knows just about it. So anyway, I'm up for business options. Okay, if you have any business inquiries that say, hey, this might be a good idea to do. You can tell me at demo at rejoicebox.com. That is my email. And of course, all of the websites someone gets, they will get their own website as well for business inquiries. Now, this isn't the thing to where you go and say spam everything because that's a dumb move. I won't read it. But simply stating in the comments like, hey, this might be a good idea. Try this and I'll think about it. I'll research it and do more digging. And hopefully your idea will come to fruition if it's good enough and fits with our values. Of course, you'll have to read the values of the Rejoice Box website, which is not actively up yet. So our values are stated on the website. So yeah, once I get enough money from one project, I'll build up another. The more projects I make, the more projects I can hire others to help me create. The more I create, the more money I'll get for my family and when we're able to live within our comfortable means, as in not like being greedy and like, oh, I made $100,000, next up is a million. Of course, naturally, I'd always, I need to hit that million dollar mark just to say I can be a millionaire, which is really strange for me to say because I only get like $12,000 a year. Anyway, I can focus on building this into a grand business that redefines some of the barren landscapes of the media. Of course, it won't be, you know, perfect, and there's bigger ones up there. The gaming industry, the music industry, the mu music industry. I don't think my music will change the music industry with Rejoice Box Records, which is my music th portal thing. Nor do I think I'll change the book publishing industry with RB Literature. This, But the gaming industry and movie industry suck pretty hard right now. Now, the music industry sucks just as hard, but there's too many big apples already trying to overthrow that music industry garbage system. So, I can be like a little tiny fish in a big giant ocean. Maybe I'll get a chunk of that pie and use that money to help build a better ecosystem for us all. And when someone who ultimately hates to need money thereby hating money and greed of all kinds, stands atop a hill. Those hills below will look up to see a better future rather than the barren mountain behind them all. 
I eat Disney, you scumbags. That could have sounded better. This is also a point where I should mention I didn't even mention that I had a card game in the in the works. It's called Tension, and I won't go into it, but essentially I created it because I got mad at Magic the Gathering. Yeah, looking at you, Wizards of the Coast, you stupid people. You idiots. D&D &D just vanished. I mean, people don't like D&D &D anymore because of the whole thing that they're doing with Hasbro. Uh, is it Hasbro? I think it's Hasbro. Anyway, I won't go into that, but... Live within our means. Don't be greedy. Love rather than have disdain. That is my mission for all this year. Hopefully for you too. And hopefully for Rejoice Box Interactive for my for its entire lifetime, which hopes to be a long and happy life. But be determined. I'm not making resolutions because it'll, it'll be a self-fulfilling failure when I do fail. What I will do instead is make self-suggestions. I suggest that I finish the book this year. If I do not, oh well. There's always next year, but I will increase my skills. I refuse to let pain get to me, though I've went way too hard in the previous months, and I get really tired some sometimes. Like right now, I've got uh, 143. One hour, 43 minutes. Like now, do you know I've written this nearly 6,000 word script in the span of four hours. Okay, four hours, not five, like I mentioned at the earlier stages of the video. I had a lot of, okay, I had a lot to say. What do you, what do you, I had a lot to say, I mean, but I couldn't simply just cough it, cough it? But I couldn't simply off the, I couldn't simply off the cuff it because of mental issues and lack of trust in my own ability to speak off the cuff, even though, like, like you see, I, when I started to delve into different that weren't on the script, you saw how much I yamble. Did I just say yamble? I meant ramble. It's, I, I refuse to accept that two cups of wine did this to me when two cups of bourbon doesn't. That's stupid. It's probably because I haven't eaten. So this is what I'm trying to do. With a plea to God and all things, give me back my confidence and I can rule the world. Release me of my fear of death and I can be their light in the darkness. I will be that ghost light. Only I can take that from me. For my authority over myself is rising. Have a nice year. Hope we'll see each other again soon. Is this real? I did not know my heart was torn. But I know we're all meant to transform. Oh Lord, through this veil I see them first.
but 